Today we're celebrating Palm Sunday, the Sunday of the Passion. We'll follow the order of service printed in our bulletin and projected on the wall. We'll turn to our opening hymn, Hosanna, Loud Hosanna. Loud Hosanna, the little children sang through pillared court and temple. The lovely anthem rang to Jesus who had blessed them, close folded to his breast. The children sang their praises, the simplest and the best. From Olivet they followed, mid an exultant crowd, the victor palm branch waving and chanting clear and loud. The Lord of earth and heaven rode on in lowly state, nor scorned that little children should on his bidding wait. Hosanna in the highest, that ancient song we sing. For Christ is our Redeemer, the Lord of heaven, our King. Oh, may we ever praise him with heart and life and voice. And in his blissful presence I invite you to stand The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ And the love of God And the communion of the Holy Spirit Be with you all Let us pray Most merciful God, as the people of Jerusalem with palms in their hands gathered to greet your dearly beloved son when he came into his holy city. Continue with the Palm Sunday Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 12th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. The next day, the large crowd that had come to the feast heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem. So they took branches of palm trees and went out to meet him, crying, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, even the King of Israel. And Jesus found a young donkey and sat on it, just as it is written, Fear not, daughter of Zion, behold, your king is coming, sitting on a donkey colt. His disciples did not understand these things at first, but when Jesus was glorified, then they remembered that these things had been written about him and had been done to him. The crowd that had been with him when he called Lazarus out of the tomb and raised him from the dead continued to bear witness. The reason why the crowd went to meet him was that they heard he had done this sign. So the Pharisees said to one another, You see that you are gaining nothing. Look, the world has gone after him. This is the Gospel of the Lord. 
Praise to you, O Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Almighty God in his mercy has given his son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You may be seated. The Old Testament reading for the Sunday of the Passion is from Zechariah, chapter 9. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, your king is coming to you. Righteous and having salvation is he. Humble and mounted on a donkey, on a colt, the fowl of a donkey. I will cut off the chariot from Ephraim and the war horse from Jerusalem, and the battle bow shall be cut off, and he shall speak peace to the nations. His rule shall be from sea to sea, and from the river to the ends of the earth. As for you also, because of the blood of my covenant with you, I will set your prisoners free from the waterless pit. Return to your stronghold, O prisoners of hope. Today I declare that I will restore to you double. This is the gospel. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle is from Philippians chapter 2. Have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but made himself nothing, taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of man, and being found in human form. He humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name, so that the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus is the Lord, to the glory of God the Father. This is the word of the Lord. The Passion of Our Lord Jesus Christ According to St. Mark, Part 1 As soon as it was morning, the chief priests held a consultation with the elders and scribes and the whole council, and they bound Jesus and led him away and delivered him over to Pilate. And Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? And he answered him, You have said so. And the chief priests accused him of many things. And Pilate again asked him, Have you no answer to make? See how many charges they bring against you. 
But Jesus made no further answer, so that Pilate was amazed. Now at the feast he used to release for them one prisoner for whom they asked. And among the rebels in prison who had committed murder in the insurrection, there was a man called Barabbas. And the crowd came up and began to ask Pilate to do as he usually did for them. And he answered them, saying, Do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? For he perceived that it was out of envy that the chief priests had delivered him up. But the chief priests stirred up the crowd to have him release for them Barabbas instead. And Pilate said again to them, Then what shall I do with the man you call the king of the Jews? And they cried out again, Crucify him. And Pilate said to them, Why? What evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, Crucify him. So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released to them Barabbas. And having scourged Jesus, he delivered him to be crucified. And the soldiers led him away inside the palace that is the governor's headquarters, and they called together the whole battalion, and they clothed him in a purple cloak, and twisting together a crown of thorns, they put it on him. And they began to salute him, Hail, King of the Jews! And they were striking his head with a reed and spitting on him and kneeling down in homage to him. And when they had mocked him, they stripped him of the purple cloak and put his own clothes on him, and they led him out to crucify him. And they compelled a passerby, Simon of Cyrene, who was coming in from the country, the father of Alexander and Rufus, to carry his cross. And they brought him to the place called Golgotha, which means place of a skull. And they offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it. And they crucified him and divided his garments among them, casting lots for them to decide what each should take. And it was the third hour when they crucified him. And the inscription of the charge against him read, The King of the Jews. And with him they crucified two robbers, one on his right and one on his left. And those who passed by derided him, wagging their heads and saying, Aha! You who would destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days, save yourself and come down from the cross. So also the chief priests with the scribes mocked him to one another, saying, He saved others, he cannot save himself. Let the Christ, the King of Israel, come down now from the cross that we may see and believe. Those who were crucified with him also reviled him. This is the Gospel of the Lord. We stand and join in the Lenten verse. <clears throat> Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love, and abounding in steadfast love. The Passion of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Mark, Part 2. And when the sixth hour had come, there was darkness over the whole land until the ninth hour. And at the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, which means, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And some of the bystanders hearing it said, Behold, he is calling Elijah. And someone ran and filled a sponge with sour wine, put it on a reed, and gave it to him to drink, saying, Wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to take him down. And Jesus uttered a loud cry and breathed his last. And the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. And when the centurion who stood facing him saw that in this way he breathed his last, he said, Truly this man was the Son of God. There were also women looking on from a distance, among whom were Mary Magdalene, and Mary the mother of James the younger, and of Joseph and Salome. And when he was in Galilee, they followed him and ministered to him. And there were also many other women who came up with him to Jerusalem. And when evening had come, 
Since it was the day of preparation, that is, the day before the Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea, a respected member of the council who was also himself looking for the kingdom of God, took courage and went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Pilate was surprised to hear that he should have already died, and summoning the centurion, he asked him whether he was already dead. And when he learned from the centurion that he was dead, he granted the corpse to Joseph. And Joseph bought a linen shroud, and taking him down, wrapped him in the linen shroud and laid him in a tomb that had been cut out of the rock. And he rolled a stone against the entrance of the tomb. Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Joseph, saw where he was laid. This is the Gospel of the Lord. We sing our next hymn. You may be seated. of children made sweet hosannas ring you are the king of israel and david's royal son now in the lord's name coming our king and blessed one all glory, Lord, and honor to you, Redeemer King, to whom the lips of children made sweet hosannas ring. The company of angels is praising you on high. And we with all creation in chorus make reply. All glory, Lord, and honor to you, Redeemer King, to whom the lips of children made sweet hosannas ring. The multitude of pilgrims with palms before you went. Our praise and prayer and anthems before you we present. All glory, Lord, and honor to you, Redeemer King, to whom the lips of children made sweet hosannas ring. To you before your passion they sang their hymns of praise. To you now high exalted do we raise all Glory, Lord, and honor to you, Redeemer King, to whom the lips of children made sweet hosannas ring. Yes, you receive their praises, accept the prayers we bring. O oh, source of every blessing, our good and gracious King. All glory, Lord, and honor to you, Redeemer King.
Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Our text is John chapter 12, verse 16, taken from the Palm Sunday Gospel. His disciples did not understand these things at first. But when Jesus was glorified, then they remembered that these things had been written about him and had been done to him. This is the text. When I read this in preparation for today, I wondered how many times did that happen to the disciples? How many times did something happen, whether Jesus said something or did something, and they didn't understand it until later? So I started checking, and it turns out it happened fairly often, fairly frequently, as we shall see, where something Jesus said or did, the disciples didn't understand it until later. It happens so often, it's, it's almost like, you know, those teenagers who finally get out on their own and have to deal with the realities of life, and they, they make the comment, oh, you know, my parents got so much smarter after I moved out from home. It's like they didn't understand hardly anything when they were at home and everything was taken care of, for, of them. And then finally, they get out on their own and all these things they start understanding. So too with the disciples, so much they didn't understand at the time it was happening and later did. So I'd like to divide these instances into two categories. There are times when things happened in fulfillment of Old Testament prophecies that Jesus did that the disciples did not understand until later. And that is certainly the case with Palm Sunday when Jesus rode into, the, into Jerusalem riding on that donkey. As it says, and as I just read, they did not understand these things at first. But when Jesus was glorified, then they remembered that these things had been written about him and had been done to him. The fact that, as we read from Zechariah chapter 9, the king of Israel would come riding into Jerusalem on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey, and that as he did so, people would be rejoicing and singing his praises was all prophesied ahead of time from Zechariah. And the disciples didn't understand that until later. There's another example in John chapter 2, when Jesus cleansed the temple. It says, the disciples remembered that it was written, zeal for your house will consume me. That the reason Jesus cleansed the temple is because he was very zealous for the house of the Lord. And that had been written in the Old Testament as well. Now, his disciples, for the most part, were not religious scholars, and so it's understandable that they would not necessarily understand what was going on, something that had been foretold by, about Jesus way back in the Old Testament. So they weren't scholars, so it's in a way understandable that they wouldn't understand it till later, something that had been prophesied about him. But of course, the ones who should have known better, the biblical scholars, the ones who knew the Old Testament front and back, they didn't believe in Jesus anyway. They completely rejected him, the ones who should have known better, and they refused to say, oh yeah, that prophecy fits in with what Jesus did, just did. They refused to do so because they didn't accept Jesus. The other category is things that Jesus said or did that the disciples didn't understand till later. They're not pro ancient prophecies from the Old Testament, but something that Jesus said to them is going to happen, and they didn't understand it till later. In Mark chapter 11, we read about something that happened on Monday of Holy Week. That would be tomorrow. Jesus was walking along, and he saw a fig tree, and he went to that fig tree because he wanted some figs, but there were no figs on the tree. So Jesus curses the fig tree, which of course raises the question, why take it out on a tree? But he curses the fig tree. The next day they're walking past and they see the same fig tree and the disciples say, oh look, this fig tree you cursed is completely withered. And then it says, then they understood what Jesus had done when they saw that fig tree completely withered. They didn't understand it at first, but not till later. And then too with Peter 
and his denials. God, Jesus told Peter, you're going to deny me three times before the rooster crows. And Peter's like, no, if and if I have to die with you, I will not deny you. And then it happened. He denied him three times and the rooster crowed. And as it says, Peter remembered the saying of Jesus. Before the rooster crows, you will deny three times that you know me. And then he understood Jesus was right. And getting back to the time he cleansed the temple from John chapter 2, he made the comment about destroy this temple and in three days I will build it up again, a reference to his death and resurrection. And as it says there again, when he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this and they believed the scriptures and the word Jesus had spoken. Speaking of his death and resurrection, his whole death, death and resurrection, he foretold and told them about time and time again, and they didn't understand it. They didn't get it. So why did God do it that way? Why did God treat his disciples that way? Have so much happen with Jesus that they did not understand until later. Why did God choose to do it that way? With the fig tree, why didn't... The disciples immediately say, oh, okay, I bet if we come back here tomorrow, that fig tree is going to be completely withered. Instead, it's like, oh, the fig tree withered. Now we get it. And so too with Peter, when, when Jesus predicted his denials, why didn't Peter say, well, I don't understand how it's going to happen, but okay, Jesus, if you say I'm going to deny you three times, I get it. I'll understand. I will do that. They just didn't. Why did God do it that way? In some cases, even his enemies had more understanding than his disciples. The thief on the cross, who had never met him before, knew nothing about Jesus until they were hanging together on crosses. He got it, and he said to Jesus, Remember me when you come into your kingdom. To which Jesus replied, Truly I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. And then after Jesus is dead and buried, the Pharisees and the chief priest remembered something Jesus had said. They remembered that Jesus said he was going to rise after three days. So they encouraged and they insisted that Pilate post a guard of soldiers in front of the tomb to make sure there was no fake resurrection. These kind of things help to establish the authenticity of Holy Scripture. If the disciples were just making up these stories, they would not have put in any unflattering details. They would have portrayed themselves as the heroes. They would have said, we got it all along. There was never a time when we were confused about anything Jesus said or did if they were just making it up. But no, they weren't making it up. These things really happened, and they really didn't understand and were willing to admit it. We didn't get it. And here's how it happened. And so we know scripture can be trusted. What scripture says will happen. Whether it is some kind of ancient prophecy about Jesus that he fulfills completely or something he said that took just hours to fulfill. We can trust what the Bible says. And yes, when he says to us, as he said to that thief on the cross, you will be with me in paradise, we can trust that that will happen. Even if we are as sinful as that thief on the cross or anything in between, we can trust that God says, you will be with me in paradise. Your sins will be forgiven for the sake of my son's death on the cross. We can trust that. It's the word of God that says so. We can trust what Jesus says in, Matthew, in John chapter 16. When a woman is giving birth, she has sorrow because her hour has come. But when she has delivered the baby, she no longer remembers the anguish for the joy that a human being has been born into the world. So also you have sorrow now, but I will see you again and your hearts will rejoice and no one will take your joy from you. We can trust God that he will do that. That even though we have sorrow and anguish now, we will see the Lord and then all of our sorrow and anguish will be gone. And no one <clears throat> will take our joy from us. We can trust God, 
He's going to keep his word and do what he says. Another thing that made a huge difference for the disciples was the gift of the Holy Spirit. When Jesus poured out the Holy Spirit on his disciples on the day of Pentecost, from then on, there's no mention of them ever not getting it. They became, overnight, they became scholars of the Old Testament and were quoting the Old Testament like crazy. And people were wondering, how can they do this? They, they haven't been to school. And that gift of the Holy Spirit is ours still today to grant us wisdom and understanding in all things pertaining to our Lord and to our lives. As Jesus says in John 14, these things I have spoken to you while I am still with you, but the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. That same Holy Spirit is with us to help us and grant us holy understanding in all things. And yes, I do believe that the way our minds work is kind of like a teenager. That there's so many things we don't understand when we first hear them, whether it was from our parents or from someone else. But later we understand them, and it, for some reason, the way our minds work, it helps us remember them better and helps us understand and appreciate them better something that we have not understood initially, but then later, it's just the way our minds work. And so God knows that, because he, of course, created our minds. And so when those kind of things happen that we initially don't understand, but we do later, it helps us remember them and know that they are true and can be trusted. And there's, as long as we live on this earth, we're never going to understand everything. But we do understand these things to be true, that God will accept us, sinners though we are, for the sake of Christ who died for us. We will be with him someday in paradise. Whatever anguish or sorrow we experience now will be gone and will re be remembered no more. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. We join together in the Nicene Creed. I invite you to stand. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshiped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In our special prayers today, we'll give thanks to God on behalf of Buck and Jan Worrell, who celebrated their 50th wedding anniversary yesterday. Let us pray. O oh Lord, our Heavenly Father, you sent your Son Jesus to be the payment for the sins of the world. As our Lord Jesus entered Jerusalem to the shouts of Hosanna, so hear our prayers as we come before you, Lord, in your mercy. O Holy Spirit, as the Lord Jesus humbled himself by making himself a servant to all, 
Help us to have the mind of Christ, that we may serve our neighbors humbly in his name. Give us opportunities to serve and proclaim Christ in our words and actions, thus bringing glory to his name. Lord, in your mercy. You do not desire the death of any sinner, but that all would turn in repentance to you. Bless the preaching of your gospel and the administration of your sacraments. Through these means of grace, convert those who do not yet know Christ and sustain those who face danger and opposition for the name of Christ. Bless our missionaries as they proclaim Christ in the far-flung places of this world and make them bold to declare your gospel, Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, you hold in your hand all the power of man. We ask you to give wisdom and wisdom to our world leaders that they might govern with integrity and respect the rights of all. Bring to nothing the plans of those who oppose your will. Bless especially our nation and all those who serve our people, our administrators, legislatures, judges, and all who serve to uphold law and order especially those who guard our borders, our police, and any others who work to keep us safe. Lord, in your mercy. According to your gracious will, O Lord, look in mercy on all those who suffer illness, disability, and any other affliction. Bless them with, with what is best for them according to your will, and help them to trust in your mercy. Use us also to help them so that, they may, so that we may serve their bodily needs. Take into your loving care all those who mourn the death of loved ones. Give them peace and comfort in Christ's resurrection from the dead. Lord, in your mercy. Lord Jesus, your mercies are new every morning. We thank you for blessing the marriage of Buck and Jan Worrell, who celebrated their 50th wedding anniversary yesterday. Open their hearts always to receive more of your love, that their love for each other may never grow weary, but may deepen and grow through every joy and sorrow they share together as husband and wife. Lord, in your mercy. All these things and whatever else you would have us ask, grant us, Heavenly Father, for the sake of him who died and rose again, who now lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. As noted in the bulletin, if you have not already done so, we invite you to place your offering in the offering plates on the table in the narthex. We continue by singing the offertory as printed. You may be seated. The service of the sacrament, I invite you to stand. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord 
You bid your people cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Paschal Feast. Renew our zeal in faith and life and bring us to the fullness of grace that belongs to the children of God. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Holy, Holy Lord, Lord God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have had mercy on those whom you created and sent your only begotten Son into our flesh to bear our sin and be our Savior. With repentant joy, we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all-availing sacrifice of his body and his blood on the cross. Gathered in the name and the remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood as he bids us do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb and his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen.
I invite you to stand. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in body and soul to life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen. Let us pray. O God, the Father, the fountain and source of all goodness, who in loving kindness sent your only begotten Son into the flesh, we thank you that for his sake you have given us pardon and peace in this sacrament. And we ask you not to forsake your children, but always to rule our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit, that we may be enabled constantly to serve you. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Blessed Lord, to Thee my heart felt thanks forever be, who has so lovingly bestowed on me Thy body and Thy blood. Break forth my soul for joy and say, What wealth is come to me this day? My Savior dwells within my heart. Please be seated. Uh, today is the last day to order flowers for Easter, if you would like to do so. The, everything you need is on the table there in the narthex. Today is the first day of Holy Week, so we have our Monday Thursday service on Thursday at 5.30, Good Friday worship at 5.30 as well. Uh, we are not having the sunrise service on Sunday, Easter Sunday, um, just the 9 a.m. service uh, on Easter Sunday, next Sunday, but then we're going to have coffee afterwards, maybe a, a little time of fellowship to reconnect after the winter. And uh, as I said in the sermon, um, don't know why God does the way, things the way he does at times, but he knows us best. He knows the best way we learn and remember things. So if there's something we don't understand, there's a reason why we don't understand it. And in his time, according to his will, he will give us that understanding. Fortunately, we don't have to have any doubt about our salvation. We know exactly how that happens through the death and resurrection of our Savior. That is without a doubt. And so since that's the most important thing, we can trust the Lord for everything else as well. Mm -hmm. 